Um, let's move to the following presentation. Will be delivered by Professor Beth Mullen, Stroman Chair for Material Science in Medicine at the University of Basel, and uh, his talk is entitled "Nanoscience Inspired Material Research in Dentistry." Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm going to talk about dentistry, and that's not the first time at Cleanum I'm talking about dentistry. I have given a speech already in 2010 on that subject, and maybe you will not expect any new result because uh, there's usually not much uh, fast progress in the field of dentistry. Nevertheless, I have to write my best, and there's no repetition, so uh, no old uh, slide is included into my presentation. I will try to give you some uh, yeah, recent advances in nanoscience-inspired materials research in the field of uh, dentistry. Uh, I think many of the medical doctors uh, do not really believe that's a critical issue because usually you will not die from oral diseases, uh, but you, if you have a look to this image, you will uh, easily understand that uh, the quality of life is closely related to oral health. And uh, if you consider what happens, uh, maybe not in such a, a strong case, but uh, uh, usually if you are in the age of, uh, let's say, 12, 13, 40 years old, and uh, you have the first dental filling that might be a small one, after a certain period of time, let's say 10, 20 years, uh, it has to be replaced by a bigger one, maybe by an inlay, and uh, maybe a root canal treatment is necessary, and finally, we do need a dental implant. And if we can uh, build some dental fillings that will have a longer lifetime, then for sure we can avoid the dental implants that are rather expensive. So therefore, the cost issue is something related to the duration of uh, the treatments in the, in the early stages. Uh, maybe everybody knows about uh, the structure of the uh, crown of a human tooth, but I like to recall that animal is the hardest substance within our body, and it is quite brittle. Uh, it contains mainly inorganic substances, uh, and therein calcium phosphates uh, plays the most important role. The dentin that is underlined, you see here, it's uh, in, uh, uh, given in this orange-brown uh, color there, uh, is a softer and tougher material than the animal. It contains less inorganic material. It also contains a significant amount of organic uh, substances and water. So uh, the success of the tooth that works for decades um, is mainly that uh, composition of two different materials, and also uh, we have to consider that we have some structure within the animal and the dentin. And uh, I think it's quite old, uh, very well known optical um, uh, micrographs, and one can easily see these Hunter uh, Schreger bands. Uh, that um, yeah, show the microstructure, uh, with especially within the animal, and you see they are running from the dental animal junction to the crown surface. So they give an indication how the dentin is, uh, is uh, uh, forming. And uh, that is also shown in, in this slide where you see the the, the rods that are formed from the tracks of the ameloblasts, and um, um, yeah, there are many um, images, old ones you see from 1965, uh, but if you have a look onto the internet, you can also uh, find some more recent ones that are uh, more related uh, to, the, to the nanostructure or the structure of uh, uh, hydroxyapatites and, and other uh, uh, parts of, uh, of that composite. In the dentin, we have something that is very similar, uh, but for sure that I mentioned already, we have also some collagen uh, fibers, and uh, that's much clearer that it's related uh, to, the, to the nanometer level. So what you see here, uh, are these, uh, these tracks uh, from the endotoplasts, and these originate from, uh, have a size um, 
uh, of some few uh, micrometers, and they go directly from the dental animal junction down to the uh, to the to the pulp. So uh, this is a complex structure, a highly anisotropic structure, and uh, the question is, uh, yeah. Can we quantify the structure and can we mimic the structure to build something that is very similar, that is biomimetic to uh, the human crown? And for the imaging, there are many approaches. Uh, for sure, in the clinics, we have a so called CBCT, where you can have a closer look than the eye of a dentist. Uh, because you can uh, have a look in the, into the depth, but for sure the spatial resolution is, is uh, rather low, so we are in the millimeter range. And if you want to have a closer range, for sure you need more photons, and if you look for techniques based on X-rays, where you have a high doses, so we cannot do these experiments within the oral cavity. So therefore, uh, we have to extract the two, for example, for, for micro CT measurements, or even to go to a synchrotron radiation facility to get a higher spatial uh, resolution and contrast. And um, on the other hand, we are interested in the nanometer range, but to get an information on the nanometer range on the entire crown is almost impossible, and therefore many people have proposed to use small angle X-ray scattering on wide angle X-ray scattering to detect uh, the, uh, these, uh, these, uh, um, uh, these nanostructures. And I have shown that uh, last time, so I will not repeat, uh, but I want to say that nowadays it's not only possible to have projection images as shown by many authors before, but also the three-dimensional information by combining some real space and racy spoken te uh, techniques like uh, Marianne Levy and co-workers have shown in Nature and also uh, another uh, group in the same issue, uh, especially for, 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 the, for the crowns uh, from Franz Pfeiffer in, in, in Munich. And uh, if I uh, summarize, do we have adequate methods to build human teeth, yes, we do have. These are the older papers I mentioned already. And uh, if you like to see some possibility to build something, uh, then you can have a look into nature materials from last year. There's a proposition, that's really crude, but uh, there's a proposition how to produce these highly anisotropic uh, structures uh, we can find in the crown of a human tooth. Uh, there are several research needs. I do not have enough time to go in all these details. Uh, uh, and uh, I want to show you some of our own results in this direction uh, from previously. So you un will understand that we have some time evolution in the oral cavity because uh, yeah, after the breakfast today, we had a demineralization phase. And now sitting here, we are in the remineralization phase. So you will understand. Uh, that easily, and for sure we can also have a look what happens on uh, the, uh, the, uh, the micrometer and nanometer level. So uh, bacteria are the reason they produce some acetic acids that uh, uh, yeah, attack the hydroxyapatite crystals and resolve them. And on the other hand, we have in the saliva some uh, uh, ions that can rebuild uh, with the tooth structure. And uh, the caries is, is, uh, is formed uh, if the demineralization wins over the remineralization. So if we are out of this uh, typical behavior, you know, if you drink, uh, let's say, uh, juice all the day or uh, Coke all the day, then usually caries is generated and you see here the different uh, stages of disease. How we can repair them, and at least uh, to repair the early stages of caries, one can use uh, an approach with self-assembling uh, peptides. Uh, they form in an acidic uh, uh, environment that is given in the caries region of the, of the network, and you see here an electron micrograph of such a network, and then it is hoped that the, cal uh, the, the calcium and phosphate ions will diffuse into that cavity, 
and uh, nucleates at uh, this network and uh, repair the, the tooth. And uh, there is actually already a, a product on the market that could be used uh, for that purpose. I'm not very convinced about uh, the success of the material because it's diffusion. I am convinced about the formation of that structure that is not really highly anisotropic, so one has to be a little bit careful. Uh, but uh, the, the, uh, these uh, uh, yeah, um, ions have to diffuse into the structure to the button and fill from the button to the top. So from my point of view, it's only working for uh, very small lesions, and that's written here uh, um, um, that is just for these uh, white spots repair. And uh, we have uh, tried to, to verify it. Uh, it works. It was also shown by other authors that it works quite well. And here you see that uh, one can produce artificial lesions, and these artificial lesions can uh, be repaired in a, in a more um, um, uh, reliable manner than uh, we can do it for caries that is formed and uh, depends on the individual teeth. And with that, I like to stop and thank all the contributions. And you see that we are not are uh, only working on nano imaging. I have present uh, some years ago and tooth repair, but we are also working on bone grafts, uh, on, on smart implants, and uh, the validation of oral scanners. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot. The paper is open for discussion. Any question, comment? So the peptide, uh, Bert, um, is acting just as a filler, not um, you know as an antimicrobial. Uh, doesn't have uh, antimicrobial properties. Do, do commercially available? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, for sure, what it should not only act as a kind of scaffold, but uh, mainly for sure as the nucleation centers for these uh, uh, calcium phosphates. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it gives a certain structure to the calcium phosphates. So that is the main issue. Um, it's interesting because you can fill in the peptide and uh, because the cavity should contain some acidic species, it forms this network in that acidic environment. And uh, yeah, I don't know what is antimicrobial in this way. Uh, for sure, uh, one uh, has some phenomena detected. Uh, and uh, yeah, there are several publications that have proven uh, that it is working. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think usually it cannot make it worse. Uh, so uh, even if you have uh, limited success, uh, it's easy to, to demonstrate. Well, do you see the antimicrobial proper properties in, in that setting as an advantage? Or? Uh, yeah, I'm not 100% uh, percent sure what else is in that uh, corodont. So uh, it might not be only the, the peptide itself, but they have added something more. Uh, also some, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that it, uh, it can be um, applied easily. So uh, maybe you can uh, contact uh, the, the small company directly. It's uh, located in Switzerland and Windisch, so it's uh, yeah, less than an hour from here. OK. Ah, there is a last question. Yes, we can take it. Okay, thank you, Bert, for your presentation. I have a question about the remineralization process. Uh, after you apply this peptide and there is the crystal growth of a calcium phosphate, could you see via micro CT if this crystal growth is amorphous or has the same structure of the bone? Uh, for sure, we cannot see with micro CT if it's amorphous or not. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's nanocrystalline for sure. Uh, we can uh, measure the density and can, uh, yeah, can, can get a certain idea, but the density is not constant, yeah, because uh, what we have seen is very similar 
uh, as you have a natural processes, so you have a kind of cap. So on top, uh, the density is larger when you go to the, to the bottom, and that is something I tried to mention, that it starts not uh, the formation of the crystallites at the bottom of the uh, uh, of a cavity, but, uh, but rather on top. So I think it's really something that helps for very small uh, lesions, but it's not helpful for bigger lesions. Okay, so I think we shall uh, uh, thank the speaker again and move.